This is Lewis Art for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and William Hill. Delighted today to be joined with Adam Catterall. We've just concluded the weigh-in of Jules Zhang versus Joe Joyce. The rematch. Um, other than that, how's things, mate? Things are all right. Yeah, things are all right, man. I can't complain, you know. Getting to talk about fight sports for a living and uh, follow these fantastic athletes all over the world. Can't moan. Absolutely, we can't moan. Um, Joe Joyce just came in at a career heaviest against uh, Zhang, 281 pounds. Um, Zhang did come in quite heavier as well. Um, your thoughts on what we've just seen there? More surprised on Zhang, if I'm honest. If I, if I tackle the Joe Joyce thing first and foremost, if we, if we look at that first fight, Joe Joyce hits Zhang regularly through the six rounds, all right? But it's water off a duck's back. He doesn't really hurt him, and Zhang can take that power, walk straight forward, and be able, and he's able to land at will his big back, uh, his big uh, left backhand, of which ends up stopping stopping this fight. So obviously, I think the general consensus when speaking to people, they all wanted Joe to come in a little heavier. I think his optimum weight is about 18.3. To come in at 20 stone, all right, it's a little bit of an eye opener. Jeez, um, but it's kind of just laid the game plan out there. You know, he's not going to be dancing around the ring. He knows that he's going to get hit. I think he's got to move his head an awful lot more than he did the first time around. And he's got to make a dent in Zhang and try and drag him into the second half of the fight. He's an amazing athlete, is Joe Joyce. And if he can get Zhang into the second half of the fight, you would think that tradition, when we've seen Zhang before, he does slow down at the back end of fights. Joe gets a little bit quicker and he should be able to take over. From a Zhang point of view, I'm a little bit surprised. He's, he's probably there just trying to second guess what Joe's going to do a little bit. And obviously coming a stone heavier, because he did everything perfect first time round. He looked brilliant, he had faster hands than Joe, he could hit it whenever he wanted to hit him, and obviously he ended up getting the job done by closing his eye. It's gonna be interesting, man, that's a lot of weight, isn't it? Yeah. Two 20 stone fellas having it, throwing leather, and with all due respect, they're not the most nimble and mobile of fellas, are they? So they're not gonna to have to go running for each other, they're gonna be stood there and they're gonna be having a go, so. It's going to be interesting to see how Joe approaches that first round. If we, if we start to see that, that head going a little bit and then the jab coming out, fight fans should get uh, excited, especially fight fans that are following Joe Joyce. But Jang tactically doesn't have to do anything different. He, know, he knows what to go and do. He's done it once before. Is it at the world stage, is it do or die tomorrow night for Joe Joyce? I think it's do or die for both guys. You've got a situation here where the heavyweight division's in this weird landscape. We're hopefully going to get an undisputed fight. I know we keep bleating on about it, but fingers crossed we'll get it. Um, and winning this fight tomorrow, whatever that trinket is that's involved in it, puts this person as the number one with the WBO. We know that we've obviously got an IBF situation with Filip Ergovic for the heavyweights as well. But having the trinket and the number one status with the WBO puts you bang in line. You're talking about 38, I think he's turned 38 this week, can he, Joe? 38 years of age, Zhang's 40 years of age. You lose this fight... It's a long way back, let's be straight. There's other young up-and-comers starting to chomp away at some of these guys and wanting their opportunity as, as well. So I think it's do a die for both guys. I think the loser is in a really, really awkward position if they've got world title aspirations. You have to win if you, if you want a shot at the title. Is it easy for someone like Zhang to, to almost be too confident against Joyce? You think about how much success he had in the first fight. Um, do you think... Zhang has to guard against his complacency in a way? That's interesting. I don't, I, I don't know Zhang as a geezer, but he doesn't come across as that type of fella, does he? He comes across as quite a serious dude. There's a little bit of fun about him, of course. He didn't underestimate him the first time around. I know that he came in as a massive thunderstorm and he got the job done. There's a lot of people that I've spoken to today that would have him maybe as a slight favourite coming into this, given what they've seen the first time around. I was one of those. Until maybe today, I think it's evened up a little bit with that, with that weight situation. Um, I can't see him underestimating Joyce. Obviously, he's here, he's getting paid an awful amount of cash, he knows what's on the table. It's a, an opportunity to have a shot at Alexander Usyk or Tyson Fury, whoever holds that WBO belt by the time it gets called next year. So I'm not anticipating him to overlook him, mate. Confidence, absolutely. He's proved that he can do it once before. And he should be confident because he won every minute of every round last time around. So what? It's Joe Joyce that's got to make the adjustments. Zhang doesn't have to make any adjustments whatsoever. He's just got to come and be Zhang and hope that Joe Joyce hasn't made any changes. Another one on the undercard, Anthony Yard makes his return after Artur Um Do you think he's having one eye on, on 
Boatsy versus Aziz at the end of the month? You'll have to ask him, mate. But, listen, Anthony Yard, last time out against Arta Baturbi, have impressed me. I know that he lost, right? There's, there's no getting away from that. But he absolutely, given where this lad's come from, the amateur, not amateur pay grief, we can call it that, to where he's had in these limited amount of professional fights. Look at that development, it's been brilliant. And he had a good goal. Listen, he got beat. He got beat by a better guy. We're talking about an elite light heavyweight in, in Artur Baturbiev. But Anthony Yard, not only is a, a, a stellar commercial name in the light heavyweight division from Great Britain, he's in a division that's got a lot of good names from Great Britain and there's a lot of good matchups to be made to be made there. Does he have one eye on it? Listen, he'd be foolish not to have eyes on Boatsy and Aziz. He'd be foolish not to have eyes on Callum Smith Baturbiev. You know, if Callum Smith comes good there, then all those guys should be absolutely chomping at the bit and trying to get a fight with Callum Smith because that's a world title. I think British fight fans will come out for it. They'll be chomping at the bit to see who the best guy is in that division. And Anthony Yard is absolutely in that mix, mate. Another one sticking on the topics of action this weekend. Uh, one British fighter is fighting overseas. Conor Ben makes his return after 17 or 18 months um, since Chris Van Herden. Um, a lot, a lot of controversy around it. People are still unsure on what's going on. Still don't feel like he's been, you know, he's been cleared, but he's not been cleared. Robert Smith came out today, uh, yesterday saying that you know, he shouldn't be fighting. Um, I suppose you know, it's something that you've been vocal about, but what is your thoughts on it? Uh, what's my thoughts on it? Listen, like I've said on my own channels, nobody's doing anything illegal. Nobody, legally, nobody's doing anything wrong, right? We've got a very broken system. The, the fact of the matter is we've got a, a young lad that failed two performance enhancing drug tests. And ironically, the second of those performance enhancing drug tests was the 23rd of September 2022, when he, when he was notified of it. And it's the 23rd of September 2023 now, near enough a year exactly to the day um, for him to be back uh, in the ring competing. Now, he failed two tests, right? And we've had a year where nobody's any the wiser as to how clomiphene got into his system. They say that We've, been, we've done this and we've done that and we've gone through this process and we've gone through that process. Listen, anybody that has paid any attention to this properly knows how the whole situation with the WBC and the British Boxing Board of Control and UK Anti-Doping has been navigated. I keep having this phrase in my head about don't hate the player, hate the game, right? The game's broken and that is evident in this whole, whole situation. From a legal point of view, should he be fighting tomorrow night? Yeah, from a moral point of view, I mean, people, listen, are there any morals in boxing anymore? I, I, I don't know, mate. So there's, all, there's always going to be people that have that opinion as to whether he should or whether he shouldn't. I personally would have absolutely loved him to go through a proper process and then a, a penance, a, 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 an adjudication, come forward and say, right, this is the situation with Conor Ben. This is the punishment for Conor Ben and then Conor Ben can move on with his career. But we've still got a cloud. And that is where, that's where we're at, right this moment. Because as I say, where is there a point where we do move on? Because there's still been an appeal. Um, and do you feel like it's now to the point where there is almost, you know, it's almost too confusing in a way. People are saying about the jurisdiction, but then Ben's coming out and Herner coming out and saying, you know, it's not, you know, we've got clear evidence and this and that. And you know, how long can we really wait for? I think it's done, mate, if I'm honest. I mean, I know that we've got a situation where the British Boxing Board of Control, Robert Smith, saying, obviously, we're in this process of appealing and we've got UCAD and all this. From my limited knowledge of, of legal matters, very rarely is an, is an appeal going to work in the favour of being overturned. So I would guess, and this is purely a guess, that obviously Connor's going to fight this weekend. Hopefully everybody comes through safe and well. And I would be very surprised if Eddie Hearn and Matchroom then do not start working towards the Chris Eubank Jr. fight. The big question is then going to be put back on the British Boxing Board of Control. Are you going to license that fight on British soil? I think every fight fan that is watching your channel right now would love to see Conor Ben, Chris Eubank Jr. on British soil. They'd love to buy a ticket, they'd love to go and watch it. Because let's be straight, outside the heavyweights, it's the biggest fight in British boxing. I know we've just been speaking about light heavyweights. All those guys getting together would be sensational. But Ben Eubank, the juniors of that, having a scrap, it'll probably do a stadium. People would absolutely lap it up, wouldn't they? The, the, the situation is going to be then put back on the British Boxing Board of Control as to whether they would license it. Now, if the appeal is unsuccessful, 
what, do they, what, what can they do? They can't do anything. We've got a young man there that has got a license with Texas. You've got plenty of other fighters that have licenses all over the world that get the thumbs up to come and fight on British soil. So what is the argument as to why you can't allow him to fight on British soil? That's a question for Robert Smith uh, to answer. Um, it's just... It's just not a nice or good situation for the whole of boxing. But the, the sport, the sport just doesn't look good, mate. The way that it's all been handled from start to finish, it just does not look good. But in, and last one for me, is this a scary point where we see that the board are always the ones that are in control and you know, they're always, obviously they license it, they can sanction the fights. But now where we see, do you feel like we might be seeing a turning point in boxing where you know, the promoters and guys like Eddie Hearn, are, you know, they're bigger than the board. You know, they say, okay, if you're not gonna license, we'll happily go elsewhere. Is that quite a scary thought in a way? Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. You've got to have rules and regulation, and if rules and regulation aren't upheld and, and, and seen to, then you just get the Wild West, man. That's what you end up getting. I mean, think about this situation, right? Let's say the appeal process is not successful for the British Boxing Board of Control, right? Or UCAD. And Conor Ben can crack on. Remember what I said a little earlier, right? You've got a lad that failed two performance and anti-drug tests, no consequences for that. The next guy, that comes along, guy or girl, that fails a performance enhancing drug test for a, a, a fight that's sanctioned by the British Boxing Motor Control, but it was a VADA test. Every single one of them just goes, oh, 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 can't punish me. Look well, what happened to Connor. You then have that situation because now you are setting precedent going forward. What is the point? What's the point? And we, we hear all the time of, like I, I've seen interviews that you guys have done with Eddie and the guys at Matchroom talking about testing and we want to do 365 day a year testing seven days a week and all that type of stuff. Fantastic, love it. What's the point in testing if you ain't gonna punish nobody? It's all right finding everybody with these drugs in and you're good. if you do more tests, you're gonna find more people. But if there's no punishment and no deterrent, it's absolutely pointless. Certainly the truth, Adam Capture will always bring in it. Uh, if they want to hear more truth from yourself, where can they find you, mate? Fight Disciples, oh, socials, mate. everything like that. Plug that, mate. Plug it, mate. Give it a plug, mate. Yeah, every single week, mate, I'm with my good pal, Nick Pete, trying to be uh, as honest as we possibly can, talking on Fight Disciples uh, and obviously on TalkSport with, uh, with my colleagues there as well. So come and join us if you... Uh, want some proper boxing conversation and obviously on boxing social here. Absolutely mate, top man, I think they're, they're calling for you now mate, so I'll let you go. Thank you mate, cheers mate.